so next up is Jesse. And, oops, sorry, that was the wrong link. I'm gonna just post a couple other links really quick. And there's a poll that's popped up on our screen, if you all could answer that. Um, I will introduce Jesse, who is a former design and product strategist at 18F, who worked with multiple federal agencies to plan and build user-centered digital solutions. Before that, she led UX design for Pivotal Cloud Foundry. She's currently Director of User Research and Design at Child Welfare Digital Services in California, where she is leading a multiple design, where she's leading multiple design teams who are redesigning a legacy system using agile and user-centered design principles. And the poll that she's asking us to answer, when it comes to design, my biggest challenge is understanding user needs, getting stakeholder buy-in, coordinating design process with engineering timing, prioritizing what to build, how much to change design from the old system, none of the above or too much of the above. And the results, wow, pretty split. So 19% of us say understanding user needs is the biggest challenge. 22% say getting stakeholder buy-in, 17% uh, coordinating design process with engineering timing, 10% is prioritizing, 14% is how much to change the old design, 2% say none of the above, and 16% say too much of the above. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm going to get set up here and see if we can get started on this. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm so excited, I think I'm gonna explode. Um, and I have a lot to share. So let's see if I have presenter view. We'll get this going. And then I need to share my screen, don't I? Yes, so Hold green on. button at the bottom. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a test, there we go. I've done this many times. And we will do, I think I'm going to do desktop two. Hold on. Whoops. Hold on, hold on. This is me. I can give a UX assessment as I operate <laughs> Zoom here. Okay. It's never the user's fault. Please remember that. Okay. And then so you're looking at my <laughs> my Slack. We'll just stop that. Um and hold on a sec. Presenter view. You in? You seeing us you seeing the title slide? Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so it looks like I have about 15 minutes. Um, I'm really excited to share and talk about this. Um, I've been a designer. Oops. I've been a designer for about 20 years. Uh, actually, ages ago, doing museum exhibit design. In the last maybe like 10 years, I've been focused on uh, uh, user experience, research, design, and um, working with agile software development teams. Um, and just quickly, like my background related to this is, um, oops, the thing, my thing in there, um, is all sorts of projects related to legacy, different sorts of legacy projects here. And one of them is uh, the current one I'm doing is the California Child Welfare Digital Services, which is I'm excited is a huge like um, proof of concept of a lot of these things we talk about and actually doing it sort of thing. Um, and before that, I was doing anything from um, some strategic assessment on federal projects, Social Security um, and EPA are two big ones of um, looking at either a, a project deep inside a legacy situation and the problems that, that have happened, or a lot of pre-planning even before going on to um, assess a legacy system. Those two could be two totally different talks. I'm not going to go into details of those scenarios today. Um, and then before also I did at Pivotal Labs, I actually did a, in the private industry some legacy um, design projects with brittle front ends trying to fix them without an enca encapsulation strategy. It didn't end well. Um, <laughs> and also just some like legacy just through a lot of like uh, developer only um, building out interfaces versus design being there. So legacy systems in a couple years versus from uh, technology being outdated. Um, where am I now? Here we go. Um, so really quickly, I'm not going to dive deep into this because there's uh, so much written about this better. But this concept of like, what is user centered design even? What is it even? And to really sum it up, it's basically using user user empathy to lead solutions. And that's basically yeah. understanding user goals, needs, attitudes, um, and to anchor product strategy and how large projects or any project moves forward. Um, there's so many opportunities to invigorate your team and also like how your designers 
um, operate just through starting with, with users because you, you begin and end with that at the end of the day. And there's loads of methods and I just want to anchor, anchor this talk in user-centric design. What I want to spend a few minutes on is talking about what working on a large scale legacy project, what are you walking into when you have this? And I'm talking mostly for me, I'm like a leading a design team in California. Um, so I'm coming from, you know, professional industry, working with a lot of government folks and different vendors who are all coming together to try to um, approach these projects in different ways. And so some of this stuff is going to be pretty obvious. You're going to hit a lot of debt, technical debt. I, I have a feeling Rob was just talking a lot about business needs debt, design debt. Um, and I, I might, you know, start the dance with your debtors because it's going to be there. And there's a lot of like logistical solutions to be had. And to get to those is going to be about relationships between people. You know, we have these projects, we have these things, but it's how we're interacting with identifying and wrangling and prioritizing all these kind of debt to move forward. You're also going to experience like years of resentment from failed past attempts or lack of attempts. Um, and you're going to inherit trust issues, whether you're new to the project or you've been on the project forever. This is a thing that you need to reckon, reckon with at all steps of the way. Um, and it's going to be part of how you deal with organizations, stakeholders, um, your teams, etc. And every, a lot of folks are using new methods. We're talking about agile and government, user-centered uh, design and government, and I'm specifically looking at legacy project, projects, large government projects, enterprise-based projects. Um, there could be any number of methods that they're experiencing for the new time. New time. How to like trust and operate daily with agile methodology, how user-centered design um, drives value for those methods to, to ladder onto things, um, new DevOps structures, deciding about open source, um, distributed teams if you have them, um, and obviously modular procurement if you're doing that as well. Um, um, and you're going to have many stakeholders and many users, uh, many. <laughs> um, and I, one of the things I've said is like, you know, using personas on really big projects like this is a challenge because there's just so many in any enterprise application. And often I'll, I would argue or, you know, suggest that we look at archetypes of types of users, patterns, find patterns between the many types of users, um, or clusters of goals, you know, a supervisor versus someone on the front line versus admin that might be across many different departments of a large project. But those those kind of clumps will help you um, anchor uh, design strategy moving forward. I um, mean, just being aware that there are also many stakeholders coming through many different ways uh, to highlight that. You know, we're often focused on building product. Um, and I've been using these overlapping circles probably almost to illegal amounts lately in some of the work I'm doing. But you know, we're used to building product, but there's, there could be from, again, from, from 10 years or 15 years of, of this project, there's stakeholder relations, whether deep in government, deep in user types, that sort of thing. Um, in the government sphere, we have um, uh, city, county, state, federal, there's all different levels and fractal interactions of, of that that's accumulated over time. And then this concept, I put it in a big bucket, the first time doing this. Um, this is uh, th the first time people have been doing this um, in many aspects of professionals coming in, working in these environments, of government folks doing this for the first time, and that also takes time and there's a lot of org change costs to related to that. You're going to experience this, this it, whether it's implied or, or very explicit, this somehow, can you somehow have delivered this yesterday? Um, and Agile should solve it all, right? Um, one of the things I posit is how can user-centered design actually front load value to help with that kind of a crushing pressure at times. Um, how we articulate these projects and the expectations with stakeholders and knowing the pattern of this will create the space of what delivery means and when. Um, so I'm talking about some high level things here, but it really helps anchor. Um, it will trickle down all the way into your development teams and your design team and your product strategy team. Um, what's need to succeed? You know, there's an art of this, of balancing, um, there's tensions, what's, what should be a standard, what should be a one-off, how do we learn? Um, I've been using the art lately in a lot of my discussions just because, you know, there are rules and standards we want to use, but everything is not a formula. And we have to really listen to like the craft of the people we're working with in this situation we're at to figure out what method or tool we use and when, not blindly. Um, so some of the things to succeed, I think this is an obvious in, in, in the agile world, of course, form cross-functional flexible teams. I'm putting a little emphasis on flexible with the cross-functional as well. Um, and teams that thrive on small mistakes. You know, government is a very risk adverse space. Um, there's a lot of tensions into doing this and a legacy system has a lot of, you know, we're trying to keep the thing running while we're building it. Um, and we want teams that can actually be uh, acutely listening to that and respond to it. 
um, include policy folks and let user research anchor strategies. So I'll talk about this more in a little bit, but policy and government situation and, and also with legacy because they have helped structure what business rules exist in, in the product to begin with should be involved in these cross-functional teams. We're used to this, right, as, a, as you know, to build product, your product research and design and development, right? But I also would posit that there's policy and practice and policy and practice aren't always aligned and product is one part of this policy and practice in government situations. Um, so there's going to be tensions between that and to figure out who and where to bring in to help move that forward. Um, a really quick example, it's a small example up in California is, you know, on the product sense, we were talking with some users about how they're working and even though they had some online solutions, they were printing out forms, printing it out afterwards and making paper files. And we were like, why? So we're doing like research on site. And they're like, well, for federal, for state reporting, we have to do, we have to submit this by paper. Um, and one of the benefits of working, you know, with the policy folks is to set up a meeting to talk to them and like, well, actually that's not the case, but you know, there've been an accumulation of myth of what policy is or isn't. So the, some group is actually working on that right now. And so that will actually have a trickle down and affect what this product, uh, what the features need to support. Um, here's a big one. Where do you spend design and development efforts? Um, one of the most important things is, you know, this a shared actionable vision and working principles, you know, make alignment a joy, I have written here, but it really matters. And I've been saying like, you know, we always hear about like vision or mission statements. And, you know, my, my thing is like, if, if your vision is just saying, you know, making it better for the users, and then it's just a link in SharePoint, you know, about here's the vision, that's, that's not your vision. You know, your vision needs to be something you put on the wall that has a point of view and is actionable. Um, because it helps, it helps drive decision and momentum. It's not, it's not just a, a checkbox as you move forward. It's actually one of the, the more vital aspects of product strategy. And so product strategy, um, agile is just some of the how. Um, it's, it's, it is, I'm sorry, this is a little harsh, but like it's headless without a point of view and a strategy of what. And government going into this, there's a lot of understanding, like and a lot of excitement about Agile because it's this way to slice up big projects and to, to see it in different ways and to have this flexibility they've never had before. Um, but without sound product strategy, it, it can be a challenge and a risk. Um, this is an example up here, up in Sacramento, where I've been doing some work. And, you know, this is product, product strategy in action. Um, and we have folks from all different aspects um, of the project working together to do some, you know, light time box, whiteboarding scenarios and timelines um, and interdependencies. And then we can, you know, obviously relax and go back into the more concrete incremental stuff, you know, sprint by sprint. Uh, product, man product management is obviously kind of related and I kind of in interchange the word with product strategy. And you might be wondering why, you know, this is a talk on design um, and legacy system. Why am I talking about product management? And for me, it, it's like really good user-centered research and design needs to ladder up to strategy and the strategy needs good product management. There's just too many things going on with the clear um, and the development aspect, all sorts of technical constraints or opportunities that need to be identified and balanced with user needs, um, the business needs, which might be policy and practice, and stakeholders, which could be many different um, um, things. Okay. Um, so really quickly here, uh, product strategy, like a, you really need a, a, a vision with a point of view that's outcome focused with measures. Um, here are some examples, say from up, up, up on California Child Welfare, you know, ensure the children of safety first. You know, if we put the word first, that's a point of view, and that helps to make product prioritization decisions, which help designers prioritize and move forward too. The second one was an example from when I was working for Department of Labor and their wage and hour decision. You know, is a vision to be to increase time to resolution, or is there something else? And then we can start to build um, our efforts around that. Principles to work by. Uh, these are some sa sample ones. You know, are you working in the open? Uh, users first. So what are your what are the principles cu culled from your 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 unique database constraints? Do you share your mistakes? Do you hide your mistakes? That could be a cultural thing too. I prefer not, but that could be. Um, the second bullet point: keep the child at the center. Connect policy and practice. These are just some experience um, ones. Experience values that the design team up at California Child Welfare has been developing um, to help us. You know, it informs product strategy and also design strategy. 